Welcome to Good Spirit Graphics. In this introductory tutorial, we're going to take a look at Mogul Blend's panel so you can understand its layout. Mogul Blend's panel is divided into different sections. At the top of the panel is the view screen, which when it starts up shows the splash screen with the current version number of Mogul Blend. If you click anywhere inside here, you'll get the main display screen. Right now it shows that we have no data loaded in it and we are on data slot one. The data slot you are currently on is the blue highlighted area. You can click anywhere in these to change to different data slots. And data slots are used to store your data from Mocha. Also in the display screen here is the rig control area. Right now it shows we have no active rig and we'll see how that works in just a second once we load some data in. If you want some more information about Mocha Blend, you can go ahead and display the help file, which is available for download at Good Spirit Graphics. This has a lot of information in it. It shows you how you can set everything up. The next section is the data section. This is where we load data into Mocha Blend from Mocha, and also to take the format of that data and bring it into Cinema 4D. Next up is the camera rig section. This is used to create and control Mocha Blend's integrated camera rig. The next up is the align section. This is used to align your rig to various objects inside Cinema 4D's world. And then we have the object section. This is used to create different types of objects inside Cinema 4D from that Mocha data. We have transform objects, corner pin objects, spline objects, and camera solve objects. At the bottom of the panel is the user settings section. This is used to do things like enter your license information, check for updates to Mocha Blend, and then each of the remaining tabs has to do with a section on the panel. The data section has a tab down here where you can set various things related to the data that you're bringing in. The camera rig section has a camera rig tab where you can set up your rig the way you want. The align section has a couple of settings here. And then finally, the object section is broken down into the different types of objects that you're going to work with. Transform objects have a tab, corner pen objects have a tab, spline objects have a tab, and then finally, camera solve objects have a couple of sub tabs on it. One is for Mocha Blend solves, one is for Mocha's exported camera solves, and then one for settings that relate to both of them. Now let's go to Mocha and get some data so we can bring it into Mocha Blend. I set up a shot in Mocha already here. We're going to go ahead and export this layer here. We're going to click on Export Tracking Data, and you'll see this version of Mocha has a new exporter, Mocha Blend Tracking Data. It also has another one for Spline Data, which shows up as Mocha Blend Shape Data. Make sure you use one of these two exporters. Mocha Blend works best if you use the new custom exporters, which are available in some versions of Mocha V4 and above. So let's go ahead and copy this to the clipboard. Go back to Cinema 4D. And with the data slot highlighted where we want to put the data, in this case 1, we'll go ahead and click on Paste Data. There, once our data is pasted in, you'll see it shows some information about it. One is the type of data, also the layer name from Mocha, some information about the format of the data, and then we have a section here, which is a shortcut for fixing problems when you load in your data. A red line shows you something that's wrong. The green area is a clickable hyperlink that allows you to fix something without having to go and hunt down on the various tabs and find where the setting is. So the first one is Mocha C4D Format Mismatch. That tells us that the format of our data does not match Cinema 4D's current document settings. To fix that, we just click on this little area here, Import Format, and that brought the 1920 by 1080 into the Cinema 4D settings and also the rest of these settings. So next is no camera rig. Well, we need a rig in our scene to do anything. So we get a choice of create rig or set active rig. We're going to pick create rig because we don't already have a rig in our scene. So if we click on that, you'll see we get a new Mocha Blend rig. Now, one of the first things you want to do when you bring data in from Mocha is to go ahead and click on this set timeline to data button. Once you do that, it will take the frame range from your Mocha data and set it on the Cinema 4D timeline here. Now that we have a rig in the scene, our rig controls are now complete here, and we usually want to go ahead and put our footage in at this time. So let's go ahead and find 
the image sequence that we used in Mocha. Here we go. We'll grab the first image in the sequence. We'll pick it up and just drop it inside our camera view area here. When we do that, it will pop up on the rig movie screen background. Mocha Blend's rig has some default positions that are controllable from these two icons here. One is you can set it for either Y up or Z up. The next is you have some default positions relating to the world axis. Here you see the rig is set for uh, being right above and centered on the world axis. We can go ahead and click on this. The world axis is now moved to the lower left part of the rig here. Or we can click once more and put the world axis right in the middle of the rig. Those three positions are also available when you have Z up just by clicking on it like this. I'm going to put the rig back in the position I use most of the time, which is Y up and with the world axis at the bottom and centered on the rig. Now, next up, we can set the rig scale by going down to the camera rig tab and changing the rig scale right here. You can adjust your rig to any size you want to fit with other objects already in your scene. I'll leave it at 100% for this demo. We can adjust the background on our movie screen here by setting the transparency settings to whatever we want. We can either turn it off or turn it on full transparency, which shows up this way in Cinema 4D. We'll put it down to zero for right now. And then we have a couple other rig control settings up here we could go over. One is if we click on this little camera icon here, we can uh, click on the camera view and go straight in and see through our rig camera. Next up is the background visibility icon, which turns our footage background on and off. And then we have this little button here, which lets us push our movie screen back. This is handy when we start adding in objects later. We don't want them to intersect with our movie screen. So let's go ahead and put it back where it was originally, right on our rig. Now, usually when you've positioned your rig where you want it, you want to lock it down with this little lock icon here. So let's go ahead and click on that. You'll see if we select our rig, we can't move it anymore. That's going to help prevent some problems later when you have other objects in your scene and you don't want to throw things off. Now, it wouldn't be a camera rig without a camera, so let's go ahead and expose it. We'll look at the uh, rig parent here, go down to the Mogul Blend Cam, and turn on the visibility. You'll see we now have an integrated camera that's built into our rig, and if you look at the field of view lines, you'll see it lines up perfectly with our footage. That allows us to render right out of this camera and use our footage in the render. Now, it's a special type of camera that has its field of view always locked to that footage, no matter what the focal length is. So if we change the focal length here on the rig cam, you'll see the camera is going to move, so its field of view will always exactly match with the footage. That lets us set some interesting effects later, where we can adjust our field of view differently from the field of view that the footage was shot in. So we can mix and match, do crash zooms and various other effects with 3D objects in the scene and not be trapped by the original field of view of the footage. We'll take a look at that effect in a later tutorial. For now, let's go ahead and turn off our camera visibility so it's not in our way. And we'll go ahead and create something from our data. We'll create a transform null, and you'll see it pops up here on our rig. It is now part of the rig, and it's parallel to the rig because we have 2D motion here set in our solve mode. So let's go ahead and look through our rig camera by clicking on this icon. And you'll see if we scrub the timeline here that our transform data is matching up perfectly with what we tracked inside Mocha. Now, one of the nice things about Mocha Blend's rig is our tracking data here is now part of our rig. So if we want to look back in our 3D view here, we'll rotate around, we'll unlock our rig and select it. You'll see we can move our rig around into any orientation look through our camera here and you'll see our tracking data if we select it here is now still exactly in the right position. Mocha Blend's integrated rig will make your life a lot easier when working with Mocha data inside Cinema 4D.